Tomorrow marks the 40 year anniversary of the MGM Grand Fire. It started in the deli and quickly grew to the size of a football field, engulfing the entire casino floor. It was the smoke and toxic fumes from that fire that claimed most of the 85 lives lost. Tonight, the story of that day and its lasting legacy told by those who were there. Jerry Bendorf, retired uh, captain, Clark County Fire Department. Mike Patterson, chief fire investigator. I'm retired. That day uh, we had a call, uh, fire in the building. On the way, if you go on down Paradise Road, we looked across the lots there. It was wide open and we could see a lot of smoke. On the way down, you could see just voluminous smoke coming up. And I thought, holy cow, how, how can this be? You know, these are supposedly safe buildings. As we pulled in next to the uh, MGM, the manhole covers were blown out of the street and smoke was so, so much pressure, it blew the manholes right out of the street. And uh, I knew right away that was gonna be a bad fire. And at first I thought maybe it was just the front canopy because the whole front canopy was on fire. And then all of a sudden I noticed that glass was breaking and people were throwing things out the windows. And as soon as we got there, I mean, there were people trying to get out, throwing, you know, things through the glass windows. It just, it was just chaos. The first thing that went through my mind is I said, we're going to lose some people on this. And, you know, I'm thinking, you know, four or five, six, something like that. I didn't expect 85. We'd go down, go down the hallways, banging on the doors, kicking them in, helping people out, you know and uh, we'd lead them to the, to the stairwells to get them down. And uh, as I went up, it just got worse and worse. It seemed like on about the 20th floor, uh, that's when you couldn't see anything. And I do remember tripping over some people. When we first started, we had got keys for the rooms, but they kind of get lost in the shuffle and you hand them out to other people. So then you got to a point where you're kicking down doors and stuff trying to get in. Because you would think that people, if they're in there, they're going to open the door for you. But they might have already been passed out and still need our help. And uh, they're solid core doors. So it's not that easy to kick them in. When you go into a room and you could see where people would write things on the mirrors and things, you know, like, you know, how they love certain people or whatever. A lot of people have passed away and the room doesn't even look smoky. But what happened is the, the air conditioning units would bring in the deadly smoke, or the deadly fumes, stocks and fumes, and you wouldn't see the black smoke like you would in the hallways. At about the 10th floor, I received a report that the casino was gone. On the 12th floor, I came across a woman about 30 years of age lying in the hallway with a lot of black soot about her face. I could not detect any vitals. I drug her out of the smoky hallway into a room near a window, and started CPR. I noticed she was wearing a wedding ring and I wondered where her husband was. It became a traffic jam in the hallway. I think it was about the 18th floor. Bodies, empty air bottles, guests being led through by firefighters. There was no panic even as I let guests hand in hand pass ca casualties lying on the floor. Some of the women were sobbing but there was no panic. I remember one woman held my arm so tight. My arm was numb when I finally got her to the stairwell. I did have a surreal moment. Uh, you know how in a movie you'll see, especially a war movie or something, how you don't hear the shooting and it's just quiet? I, that happened to me. I can remember being just exhausted and I leaning back in one of the hallways and, and trying to get my breath. I was looking out a window and the way the, the building is kind of like a T, I was able to see the other side coming across and the people over there were you know, calling, calling for us and I'd yell that we're coming, we'll be there, you know. So I always feel guilty that maybe I didn't get there. Fire was technically under control and, and manageable after about an hour and a half. But all day you're looking at hot spots and finding people and taking them out and seeing people that didn't make it. Tim Lompre, owner manager of Lompre Investigations, LLC. I was on scene three days after the fire. My dad escorted me in. My father was one of the lead investigators on the fire spent many many days there i think he spent nine days there they were on the initial discover and uh identify body team and, and that's something that haunted him the rest of his life i can i can tell you that i love my father um and 
but I carry them with me every day because I, I have a tattoo after my dad passed that has the Hilton fire and the um, MGM fire on my arm because there were significant events in his life and I wanted to make sure that I honored that. I was a 16 year old kid, man, and it was weird because you looked out across the casino, the casino was completely burned out. What's so weird about it was you could see all the slot machines were melted out. They had these statues that looked burned. I knew people had died, obviously. And it was just like really eerie seeing these statues that were soot stained. You know, it's very odd, very, very dark. And one thing is I'll never uh, never forget was there's a red circle on the carpet where the sprinkler had activated it and kept that part of the carpet red. It was the only thing that was red in the entire building. Everything else was sooted and soot stained. A good sprinkler system for the whole building. We'd have gone over there and mopped up some water and gone home. The advents from that fire, of sprinklers, fire safety, that's the price that those people paid in the MGM fire, was to have that everywhere. And, and that sticks with me all the time. That is not a sacrifice that has made in vain. Every fire I investigate, one of the first things we look at, smoke detectors, sprinklers, did they actuate? What did they do? Because that's a legacy of that fire and what worked and what didn't work. And so that's melted into what we do every day. Still a tragedy um, and something so preventable as that is just a few more sprinklers and it's done. I mean, no fire like that. I mean, you might have the deli burned out, but that'd be it. In the aftermath of the fire, the state began to reform fire codes requiring sprinklers and smoke detectors while also placing tighter restrictions on the types of building materials used in construction. That push for safety measures began to fade, though. Patterson says another fire at the Hilton 81 days later put new urgency on lawmakers to get a law passed, which they did in 1981.